Live, local breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. Another death linked to a rare surgical infection. Good evening, I'm Michael Cogdell. And I'm Carol Goldsmith. Greenville Health System now confirms four patients have died after contracting the bacteria. WYFF News 4's Angela Rodriguez joins us live and local outside the hospital. Angela, what's the latest? Well, Carol, late this afternoon, officials confirmed that a fourth person with this infection died last week. And we also found out just hours ago that this infection started much sooner than doctors first thought. Now, the source of the outbreak is believed to be tap water, specifically the water used to make ice. Officials tell us they may never know how patients contracted this rare infection because they do not believe they ever came in contact with the ice. We do know four people with the infection have died. Officials say three of the 15 confirmed cases were traced back to 2013. The hospital first told the public about the outbreak in June of this year. Officials say the majority of the patients had some sort of heart surgery in the same operating room. We learned today that the ice used in a machine to cool the blood and heart tested positive for the rare bacteria. The ice machine was removed. The OR was closed for nearly a month. It is back open now and new OR procedures were put into place. But the hospital confirms there may be as many as 180 people who are still potentially at risk. We feel that our water is very safe. There is no way to sterilize water coming into your home or our hospitals. And with that, DHEC sent out a warning that the water in Greenville is safe. They want everyone to know that. What the hospital says it's doing is that it is taking extra precautions to keep the environment clean. And there are new procedures when it comes to handling running water in the operating room. The hospital says that two people with the infection are still being treated here, but officials tell us that there are no new cases to report. But because of the long incubation period of this infection, we're told it could be 120 days before the all clear is given. Angela Rodriguez, WYFF News 4 Live tonight in Greenville. Angela, thank you. Many of you started the day out with this. The upstate soaked with rain this morning. It's a familiar sight across the Carolinas, and some areas getting more rain than others. There's a live look from our Woodruff Road Sky Cam in Greenville. Even now, it is still gray over the upstate. News 4's chief meteorologist, John Sesrich, joins us. And, John, there are still scattered showers, right? Yeah, Carol and Michael, just a few of them out there, as you can see. But for the most part, things have gotten pretty quiet. We're kind of in a little bit of a lull. This kind of happened yesterday also. We had a little bit of sun from time to time, and we didn't have a whole lot of precipitation. And then as we went through the overnight hours, more heavy showers and thunderstorms developed around the area. So some of you saw a lot of rain. Uh, most of us over the weekend saw at least a, an inch or two of rainfall. But uh, two and a half inches of rain fell in a very short period of time, just east of Paris Mountain, all the way over to Taylor's. It came down, and all that came within one hour time period. So. Uh, we still have a potential for some very heavy showers possible overnight tonight. And tomorrow it could continue. Uh, and no watches, no warnings right now. But their main threat would be flash flooding, especially in very, very small areas. Now back to you, Carol. John, thank you. The Cherokee County Sheriff's Office tells us they arrested a Gaffney police officer last week. Johnny Miller was arrested Friday morning. That's when deputies were dispatched to McCowns Mountain Road. His wife says he woke up around 8.30, said he didn't feel well, and started to act bizarre. Investigators say she and a child were trying to leave the home when Miller pulled out a gun and started shooting at the two. Miller is charged with criminal domestic violence and pointing and presenting a firearm. In Greenville County, deputies are still looking for the person who stabbed a man to death over the weekend. It happened on Pinecroft Drive in the Granite Apartment Complex Saturday night. Witnesses tell deputies a man walked out of his apartment holding his chest, saying he had been stabbed. The coroner tonight identifies him as 35-year-old Lawrence Bress. So far, no arrests in this case. Bond denied the suspect accused of cutting another man's neck will stay in jail for a while longer. Steve Williams is charged with armed robbery, kidnapping, and assault. The victim told police he stopped at a gas station Friday night. They say Williams and another man asked for a ride. The victim's family says Williams sat behind the driver. They say Williams cut the driver's neck shortly after they took off. The driver then jumped out of the moving car to get away and needed three stitches for his neck. Williams will have another bond hearing in circuit court next week. Authorities in Spartanburg are looking for a bank robber who used some bed linens to get the crime done. Police say the Wells Fargo on WOEZL Boulevard was robbed this morning. They say a man wearing a medical mask gave the teller a pillowcase and told her to put money in it. Police sent us some surveillance images of the robbery in progress. Investigators say the man ran off on foot after getting some money. 
Again, take a close look here. If you know anything about this robbery or you can tell anything about this man, call Crime Stoppers there in Spartanburg County. You don't have to give your name at 1 888 Crime SC. A 10 year old is in custody and faces a list of charges involving fires in Asheville. The fires happened on Monte Street yesterday. Fire officials say a fire was set in one vehicle and spread to others before reaching a nearby home. Police and fire officials say they found other nearby vehicles had been broken into. Small fires were set inside of those as well. Officials say the boy responsible is now in custody at the juvenile detention center. The 10 year old faces eight counts of felony breaking and entering motor vehicles, four counts of burning personal property, and first degree arson for the burning of an occupied dwelling. The upstate is home to the first bridge completed through special funding provided by state lawmakers. This morning, the South Carolina Department of Transportation celebrated the bridge near Blacksburg. It's on Jumping Branch Road. Funding came from Act 98, which Governor Nikki Haley signed into law last June. It gives South Carolina additional money for bridge, resurfacing, and interstate projects. Commitment 2014 coverage now. WIFF News 4 will introduce a new political poll this week with the state of South Carolina. Nigel Roberts is going to bring us the exclusive results, and he joins us now to begin doing just that. Nigel? Yeah, Michael and Carol, when it comes to issues facing the Palmetto State, we wanted to know what the voters are thinking, so we asked. In fact, we asked 1,000 people from all walks of life numerous questions about the governor's race, the Senate races, your views in the legislature, and much, much more. Our goal, give you insight, and we're calling it the Palmetto Politics Poll. If there's a particular issue that you care about, it might tell you that uh, there's more education that needs to be done amongst other voters on a particular issue and why. Um, so it is a way for people to see what's, what their fellow citizens are thinking. Starting tomorrow at 6, we will show you the results of our Palmetto Politics poll. All week, we'll take a look at the answers, and we hope it gives you insight into the mind of the voter. Nigel, thank you. Tomorrow's runoff election day in the state of Georgia. Among the races, a high profile U.S. Senate runoff among Republicans. There they are, Jack Kingston versus David Perdue. That winner is going to face Democrat Michelle Nunn coming up in November. There are also four runoffs for U.S. Congress and runoffs for a state school superintendent in Georgia as well. Of course, we'll cover it all for you. Look for updated results after the polls close on air and on WIFF4.com. Turning to sports news now, we're talking ACC football. Sports director Brad Fralick is in Greensboro, North Carolina with the Clemson Tigers. The new college football playoff getting lots of attention here at the ACC kickoff at the Grand Over in Greensboro, North Carolina. And the overwhelming sentiment with the coaches is they're in favor of this playoff. You know, you can probably see you know, several teams that, that may have one loss, some of them two, depending on who it is, that could still be in the mix. Uh, for a, uh, a top four, but uh, the margin of error is very small. Coming up a little later in sports, the defending national champions are getting lots of love in the preseason poll. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. At the Grandover in Greensboro, North Carolina, Brad Fralick, WYFF News 4.